you can shape the horizontal edge of a floor slab to thicken the edge of the slab. To create a slab edge on the structure ribbon in the structure panel, I'll expand the floor split button and click the slab edge tool. The same tool can be found on the foundation panel under the slab split button. Revit prompts me to click on an edge of a floor, slab edge, or model line. In the type selector, you can choose the type of slab edge. There is currently only one type loaded, but you can always load or create others. Notice that when I move the cursor over an edge of the floor, the edge highlights. I can simply click to thicken that edge, working my way around the floor slab, or press the tab key to highlight a chain of edges, and then click to thicken all of the edges. Note that if you click on an edge that has already been thickened, Revit removes the thickened edge from that side of the slab. I'll press the escape key twice to end the command. Since the underside of the slab has been thickened, the slab edge appears as a hidden line. Notice that as I move the cursor over the edge, the entire floor highlights. But if I move the cursor over the hidden line, I can select the slab edge. Also, the slab edge has mitered corners. I'll double click on the section callout to open the section through the slab edge. When I select the slab edge, notice the grip. The slab edge is actually placed at the level of the floor slab, so this grip is at the top of the floor slab edge, and the thickness of the slab edge is measured from that point. With the slab edge selected, in the properties palette, you can see its instance properties. Under constraints, you can adjust the vertical and horizontal profile offset values. For example, when set to zero, the slab edge aligns with the edge of the floor. But if I change both of these to minus four inches, and then click apply, this offsets the slab edge so that it moves down and outward by the distance specified, forming a brick ledge. Most of the other parameters in the properties palette are grayed out, but the final parameter, angle, changes the angle of the slab from horizontal. I'll change this to minus 10 degrees and click Apply. You won't often create slab edges like this, so I'll change the value back to zero. At present, the slab edge does not have a material assigned to it, which is why it appears completely separate from the rest of the floor slab. In the Properties palette, I'll click Edit Type. Before we change the material, in the Profile parameter, you can see that the shape of the slab edge is determined by a two-dimensional profile so it's quite easy to design your own custom slab edges. In the Type Properties dialog, under Materials and Finishes, I'll click in the Material field and then click the small button to open the Materials dialog. In the Materials list, I'll select Concrete, Cast in Place, and then click OK. Then I'll click OK to close the Type Properties dialog, and then click in the empty spot in the view to deselect the slab edge. Now, both the slab and the slab edges are the same material, and the slab edge and the slab appear to be one element. I'll switch the default 3D view, change the visual style to consistent colors, and orbit around so that you can see the slab edge. Notice on the bottom of the slab how the slab edges miter in the corners. I'll select a slab edge. Notice that the ribbon changes to the Modify Slab Edges Contextual Ribbon. In the Profile panel, I'll click the Add Remove Segments tool. Now I can add or remove slab edge segments by simply clicking. If I click on the edge of a slab that already has a slab edge, it will be removed. And if I click on an edge that doesn't have a slab edge, Revit adds a slab edge to that edge of slab. 